Hello. In this video, we're going to be talking about Bernoulli's equation as it applies to compressible fluids. So normally when you apply Bernoulli's equation in your most like fluid dynamics class, is you're going to be dealing with it as it applies to an incompressible fluid. So, you know, driving your car, the air hitting that car can assume it's incompressible. So, but at speeds greater than 100 meters per second or 223 miles per hour, we can't assume that the flow is incompressible. We now have to assume that it is compressible. As speed increases, the air compresses. Obviously, there's more energy, it's being compressed more, and therefore density is no longer can be assumed as constant. So if our flow is isentropic, then we can use the relationship that the pressure equals the density to the gamma, which is a ratio, which is the ratio of specific heat of the gas, or Cp over Cv. You might have seen that in a gas dynamics class. So air, it's about 1.4, and helium, it's about 1.660, and this varies with temperature. So if we want to look back in the last couple of videos I made when I derived Bernoulli's equation, we had two equations that we kind of used to solve that, which I'm going to write out here. We had this, we call this equation two. And then along a streamline, we have this integral equation three. So using this, back when we assumed a incompressible flow, you can easily integrate this and we get the traditional looking Bernoulli's equation. But now we have this different value for pressure here. So I did some math. And so we have the pressure again equals the density to this gamma value. So we can say density equals the pressure to the one over this gamma value. And now looking back at this term here, we can we can integrate that, and we get gamma over one minus gamma pressure to the gamma minus one over gamma. But this can also be written as gamma over one minus or gamma minus one pressure divided by density, and then the proof that that the the pre pressure to the gamma minus one divided by gamma equals pressure over density can be seen here, because we know density is this value here, divided by that, do some algebra, and we get this back. So finally, combining all of that together, we have Yeah, so combining, integrating this into this equation here, we get this out. And so this is along a streamline. So we can, all, all these could have a subscript one as like state one along the streamline. Um, and then that equals to, you know, a certain other streamline. But again, this is all constant along a streamline. So now using this equation here, my goal is to find the relationship of, between velocity and like stagnation pressure. So how do I go about doing that? So first we're gonna neglect gravity as pretty common in these problems and set V equals to zero to find stagnation pressure on right hand side. So let's pretend that you know, we have this kind of duplicated on both sides along a streamline so we can rewrite this, and then on the right hand side, neglect our velocity, and that will give us kind of our stagnation pressure. 
And again, go back to my previous video, I talked more about stagnation pressure. Now writing all this out again, we have gamma over gamma minus one, pressure divided by density plus one half V squared equals gamma over gamma minus one. Then we got our stagnation pressure and then our stagnation density. Now rearranging things again, we can write this as one plus gamma minus one divided by two, and then one divided by gamma p divided by density, this is a row, density, v squared equals p naught divided by p divided by or again, our stagnation density times density. So now we have this form here. Then we're gonna use our isentropic relations. These right here, you can find these in uh, textbooks, online, which kind of have the relationships between, this is the speed of sound equals the gamma times the R value times the temperature. And that can be rearranged as gamma pressure divided by, gamma times pressure divided by density. We also have this relation here between stagnation pressure and pressure and then density. So plugging in the above equation, which is here. So plugging these into this equation, we can get the relationship for velocity and Mach number with the stagnation pressure. So I'm gonna write these out here. So velocity equals two A divided by one, well, that's 2a squared, so that's our speed of sound. Our p huh? We also have our Mach number equals 2 divided by. So this is a powerful relationship here because we can have sensors on our plane that can calculate, you know, if this is a plane flying through the air, we can have sensors like pedo, pedo, pedo tubes that can have, that can give us the stagnation pressure, the ambient air pressure, and if we know the, um, if we know the speed of sound, um, given our temperature, and you know, we know our gamma value for air, we can calculate our airspeed velocity. So that's a very handy thing to know.